Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Friday, and here we are again looking off the southeast United States coastline at another system. This is not Alberto. Alberto's gone. This is Invest 94L, a new low that came out of the Caribbean, and this is another threat for subtropical or tropical development over this weekend, and I haven't been able to post much about this yet on my site due to time constraints, but if you follow my Facebook page, we've been discussing this since early this week, the setup that could lead uh, to the possibility of this happening as improbable as it is to have two storms like this in May, uh, we have again another upper trough that is getting cut off over the southeast United States uh, due to a blocking ridge off to the north and uh, this upper trough is moving out over the water slowly over the next couple of days and getting stacked with this area of surface low pressure and when it does that it can allow warm core characteristics to develop due to thunderstorm activity being unimpeded by wind shear and having a cold environment aloft to aid instability and uh, we can get subtropical and eventually tropical transition just like we had with Alberto. Now this is a much larger system than Alberto and this is going to have some different factors going on with it. You can see a large moisture shield in here and uh, you can see that there's two centers right now. We have this one here which really came out of the Caribbean and we have a second center up here which is really a baroclinic reaction to the fact that we have a bunch of defluent flow aloft here and uh, these two will probably dance around each other and eventually combine into a singular low pressure area tonight and tomorrow and um, this is going to be around for a while. Uh, if we look at the water vapor imagery, we can see that right now the system's still getting sheared by the jet coming out of the Caribbean here, and it's really disorganized and not tropical in nature as of this moment. However, again, you can see the area of calmer winds aloft here getting close to the coast. This is propagating eastward, and eventually this is going to take over here and stack up with the surface low, and eventually the wind shear will lighten up, and you will see the convection probably try to start popping in a more symmetric fashion, similar to when Alberto formed and allow the core to warm and even the National Hurricane Center is now giving this a high chance of development and this will likely become barrel either subtropically or tropically named tomorrow at some point probably later tomorrow evening or so now what we're watching here is the fact that although this is moving northeast this isn't going to be able to escape because if you look back to the west here we have a, a deep layer ridge centered over the southern part of the United States we have an upper trough digging into the western US and that's what's bringing hurricane bud close to the Mexican coastline here as this trough digs in and comes east this ridge is going to be lifting northeast like this and with this orientation it's going to block off 94L prevent it from escaping and instead force it to come back around towards the southeast U.S. coastline, probably near northern Florida or Georgia by some time on Sunday. And uh, this is pretty much a guaranteed landfall, unlike Alberto, uh, which ended up going out to sea. This is coming in towards the coast at a perpendicular angle, and it's very rare to get a cyclone, tropical cyclone, coming into this section of the coastline here, northern Florida and Georgia. Georgia especially doesn't really get any landfalls. But if you get a situation like this where it's blocked and comes back, it is coming in at the perpendicular angle that makes this possible. Now here's the European look at the situation. This is valid Saturday evening from last night's run. You can see how much it winds up the low here uh, off of the Georgia coastline down under 1,008 millibars, probably at least tropical storm strength here. It already has gales on the eastern side, and you can see that by Sunday evening it brings it in to Daytona Beach here, a little bit farther south than some of the other models, but most of the models, as we'll see, are uh, generally between Savannah, Georgia, and Daytona Beach here, in fairly good agreement on this pattern, as the steering will be more more known than Alberto. With Alberto, it was a little bit weaker. The steering here is going to be a little bit easier to work out. What's interesting though is that the GFS does not really do anything with this. You can see it's 1011 millibar low. This is really nothing here coming in towards the coastline by Sunday uh, afternoon. It's a little little spread out. It could be that it's not consolidating it very much, but it's interesting that the GFS still has not latched on to development even though it was one of the first models to see this happening. It could be, though, if you look at the initialization, it starts it out at between 1,016 and 1,018 millibars out here at zero hours, which is incorrect because the low is already down to about 1,010, and uh, the initialization may be too weak with that, and that could be a problem. So for now, with all the other models basically on board with at least a weak tropical storm developing out of this, we're going to discard the GFS showing no development, and we're going to assume that it does because chances are it's going to.
Now these are the late model tracks here uh, for tw for 6Z rather. You can see um, that they bring it up and it comes back around and it moves right into the Jacksonville, Florida area. Now what I want to pay attention to is where the initialization location is because it got moved. Now here it is at 6Z, just to the north of the Bahamas. If we look at the early 12Z runs, notice where it is. It's no longer down here, it's moved up to the north. And here's what happened. Uh, remember these two centers here. The one here and the one here, uh, what they did is they switched the coordinate of 94L from this low up to this low. And I think that was a mistake because this is the low that's going to be carrying the burden over the next 24 hours. And the reason why is because it's the closest to the convergent zone here with the trade winds coming in from the southeast, hitting the wall that uh, is there at the low pressure region and causing most of the upward motion here. Also, this is the baroclinic low. This is not the tropical origin low, and this is probably going to just get merged in with this one with time. This should be dominant, and you can see the rotation starting to show up in here. This should be the dominant low. I think it was a mistake to move it to the north, and you see what the consequence of that was. Moving to the northern location, have the models now taking this into South Carolina. Uh, which I think is less likely. I think it's more likely that we're going to see something in the middle here where this low merges with the one to the south and then we take the best of both worlds and take it more in the middle here towards Georgia or northern Florida and I think this model track set has a better general look to it than this one does and I think these are too far north in here going into South Carolina. That said, South Carolina will probably get some rainfall from this due to the massive rain shield uh, that exists to the north of it and all the moisture that's going to be coming in with the onshore flow. Now here are the sea surface temperatures off the southeast coastline and you can see the Gulf Stream here. This is where Alberto tried to develop over 26 sea water. Uh, this line right in here shows where all the water is above 26 degrees Celsius. You can see there's a decent area of it. It's not particularly warm, but it is a degree or so warmer than it's supposed to be for this time of year. Even 27 degrees Celsius is showing up here. Now, if we have this track that's going to come up like this and then come back towards the coast, you can see that it has to move over the warmest part of the southwest Atlantic in here. So there is a decent amount of fuel there. You can see that the shelf waters get colder, which is another reason why this will probably try to weaken a little bit just before landfall and it will probably reach its peak while it's over this warm pool that's sitting in the uh, southern part of the Gulf Stream here. Um, talking more about the strength of this, how strong it's really going to get, there are some issues here. It is different setup than Alberto. You can see that there's a lot of moisture available for it here. There's a big moisture shield and this moisture is not going anywhere over the next couple of days and so it will be able to tap into this for quite a while. Also, you can see that the moisture is already trying to spread uh, to the west here. You can see the cumulus clouds developing over North Carolina, indicating the edge of the mid-level moisture shield is already making it inland, which means the moisture is getting wrapped around into the northwest quadrant of the storm. Convection is not developing yet because of the wind shear pushing everything off to the northeast. So there is more moisture available than with Alberto. Also, the dew points are closer to 70 over here over this entire region, unlike uh, with Alberto when they were in the 40s. So the low-level moisture moisture is better over the continent and won't be as much of an issue. However, the system is larger and it can bring drier air in from farther away, so it kind of balances a little bit. Also, this big ridge over the central part of the country is providing a lot of subsidence, which means sinking air, which tends to dry out the middle part of the atmosphere, and so the mid-levels of the atmosphere are dry, even though the low levels are moist. So there is still dry air to be had coming off the continent, which will likely start getting entrained into the western side of this as it strengthens and that is the problem with these pre-season storms is that there's too much dry air around to allow them to strengthen too much. However, conditions look a little bit more conducive than they were with Alberto. It's a larger storm with more moisture to work with and the waters are warm in here. So it's probably going to make it to Alberto's peak strength. I think around 60 miles per hour for a tropical storm is where this is going to go, plus or minus five or something like that. But in reality, this is really going to be a stronger and more potent storm than Alberto was. Alberto was a very tiny thing about the size of this circle, and the only reason it got to 60 miles per hour and 995 millibars was because it had a 
a big thunderstorm that went up and it was very tight and it sucked in a bunch of dry air after it strengthened and then it died and that's uh, basically what happened with that. This is a larger system, more moisture, more rainfall. This whole region is going to get a lot of heavy rainfall. Also when it comes in it's going to be coming back out like this as a trough picks it up, going to bring a big swath of rainfall, not oops, not that large, but a big swath of rainfall along the coastline here and it'll be interesting to see if it even tries to redevelop a little bit if it gets over the water uh, before it races off to the east northeast but in general the southeast US is going to get some more drought relief from this which is a good news I'm have, I have a feeling the storm will be more good news than bad but this may get up to 60 miles per hour which means that a larger area of uh, at least gale force winds is going to be coming into the coastline unlike Alberto which was small and then didn't get the winds on shore this is going to be affecting people in this region and uh, mostly beneficial with the rainfall so this is not that bad of a story but uh, this is going to be barrel most likely tomorrow at some point will be coming into the coast sometime on Sunday near Jacksonville uh, plus or minus to Daytona Beach to Savannah Georgia somewhere in here coming into this curved region of the coastline we'll have to watch for it trying to tighten up uh, because of the curvature of the coastline as it comes in at a perpendicular angle it's rare to get these coming into this part of the coastline uh, but it will be interesting to see if it tries to tighten up it'll probably reach its peak over here, over the warmest part of the water, weaken a little bit before landfall, but the curvature of the coastline could offset that a little bit. We'll be watching for that. And uh, I will have another discussion out on this later, probably either tonight or tomorrow morning, and uh, we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.